All right, people were like, Mike, watch. Is this the video you wanted me to watch? Ameri why America is so damn big. Johnny Harris is a propagandist. All right. All right. We'll go. We'll, we'll talk about Fetterman and marijuana legalization in a second here. Um, let's watch this video. Let's have a nice little react. It's only 18 minutes, so it's not going to derail the entire stream. I hate CIA Harris. He sucks. He sucks. So let's watch Hakeem. Every country on this planet has a story about its founding. Whether it's about a group of revolutionaries along with the masses trampling a global superpower, or a romantic rebel delivering political and economic independence for his Caribbean island. But the United States story is different. The US's story is a new story and it's tightly controlled. It's a story that is being used as a weapon. A weapon to subjugate millions of people around the world and at home, to eliminate ancient cultures, to expand. Oh, he's making fun of the Chinese one. He's making fun of the Chinese one. Thanks for the hype train, everybody. Every country on this planet has a story about its founding. Whether it's about a group of rebels trampling the global superpower. Or a pacifist delivering independence for the second largest country on the planet. The most powerful man of the 20th century. Or some dude pulling out a sword from a rock. They're usually somewhat fabricated and polished ideas of where the country came from, what it stands for. But China's story is different. China's story is a new story, and it is tightly controlled. It's a story that is being used as a weapon. A weapon to subjugate millions of people, to eliminate ancient cultures, to expand China's borders farther than they've ever pushed before. You love to see it. Okay, now I understand. He's making fun of the China video, which was dog shit, by the way. That most people believe that the US actually looks like this and that it always looked like this. But the US doesn't look like this. The US actually looks a lot more like this but only if you look at the real history. I mean, this is so much more realistic of a video than the one on China. The China one was insane. I couldn't believe it was real. I couldn't believe it was real. It was like, China doesn't look like this. It's like, what? China's the oldest nation in the world by far. That's <laughs> so crazy, man. Okay, so now it's after Columbus and imperialism is on a roll. European countries are looking for more land so that they can expand their borders, send their armies, and dominate markets. The French oh are doing- Oh my god, I love it, dude. Johnny Harris sucks so bad, dude. Okay, so it's now the 1700s, and over in Europe, the new fad is imperialism. 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 Right, yeah. It's European countries who are looking for more land so that they can expand their borders, send their armies, and everyone's doing it. It's the French, it's the British, it's the Spanish, it's even the Japanese are starting to get on board with this. And over here, in today what we call China, they had once again slipped into a period of serious disunity. They were divided, but this time it came with an extra dose of humiliation. He legitimately sucks the ass. The British are doing it, the Spanish are doing it, and over here, in today what we call the United States, they had just broken with the British. The United you know States- what? Hakeem has I legitimately inspired me. I want to do a video like this now. Oh my god, this is so good. Several years after the US grabbed Texas, the American regime did the same thing to an even more remote region during the Mexican session. They annexed this place that is twice the size of Texas, which has its own very distinct languages, cultures, and did not identify or connect with Washington. Likewise with Alaska, which was purchased from the Russian Empire by the US without any input from the- I love how it's called the Mexican session, and cessation rather, and it's just like, we stole the entire Southwest with military force. We just stole it with naked aggression. Some of the most valuable real estate in the world. Trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars just literally stolen. Indigenous population that rightfully owned the land. Following this, they declared the Monroe Doctrine, in which they militarily enforced that all of the Americas was their own backyard, and that is within their right to do whatever they like with the area. The empire the United See, States was built- Monroe Doctrine, good. But when Russia says that uh, their border countries are in their sphere of influence. That's bad. Monroe Doctrine, that's legitimate. Russian sphere of influence, China saying they should control the South China Sea, 
That's imperialism, chat. Monroe Doctrine, good. <laughs> Liberals. For the past 150 years has been pouring money and people into these regions to make them more like America. It's kind of like the geopolitical version of gentrification. It's basically where non-American societies are subsumed by societal norms of white American culture because of a bunch of militarization and money. So in Hawaii, you see this in Hawaiian schools that are only teaching in English and not in the traditional Hawaiian language. Oh, and it starts to get a lot worse. Mainland America, Native American- oh, I see, well that happens in Hawaii, that's fine, but you try to teach Mandarin in Xinjiang, you fucking genocider. You genocider. And for the past 30 to 40 years, China has been pouring money and people into these two regions to make them more like China. It's kind of like the geopolitical version of gentrification. It's basically where non-Chinese societies are subsumed by societal norms of Han Chinese culture because of a bunch of militarization and money. So in Tibet, you see this in the Tibetan schools that are only teaching in Mandarin, not in the traditional Tibetan language. They station the military in over 70 countries with 800 military bases worldwide. They sponsor dozens of coups, raid countless elections what? and- What about islands? What about an island in the South China Sea? Don't you think they're an imperialist? Oh, you call yourself an anti-imperialist, but then you're not a condemning China with 90% of your effort. Let me just say this, chat. I spend the appropriate amount of time condemning China. Uh, I do it proportionally. For every military base, I will do a foreign military base, I do a condemnation. So China has one, America has 700, so I'll do 700 days of condemning America, and then one day of condemning China. Proportional. <laughs> oh lord, it's done. Okay, this was a semi-satirical response to Johnny Harris's horrible video on China. I've never had to remove so many filler-like words in my life. I've also moved around bits of the presentation of the argument because the continuity of his video is incredibly confused. I also tried to do the stupid voice thing that he does, but it's really, it's generally really hard. I'm not a liberal, so it doesn't come built in. Anywho, the facts of this video are real, but I've emulated his style and of liberals like him to show you just how silly all this is. The real shame though is that the US actually is a threat to world peace and stability. If you want to know exactly why Johnny's video is bad, take a look at this video from Nathan Rich. That's all for this time. If you Johnny enjoy what I do, then please consider supporting so me on bad, Patreon. Dude. It really does help. I'd like to thank- That was great. Can we get- can we get to- Honestly, I think he went too soft on America. Honestly, it was good, but I think you were too soft. Like you really, you were way too soft on America. Like the difference between China and America is there's really a lot to talk about when you talk about aggression from America. Whereas with China, there's very little. I mean, it, it exists, you know, uh, they've made major mistakes. They've done aggression before, but the scale uh, compared between China and America is just like, it's insane. <laughs> It's going to be triple digits in LA and we can't even go to the beach because of bacteria levels. California blows. Visitors of these beaches are advised to avoid swimming because their bacteria levels exceeded state health standards. That just means there's a lot of sewage in the water, right? Like that means that you guys are, you guys are putting sewage into the water, right? Yeah, there's like no way that bacteria just grows out of whack in, in, in a beach for no reason. Oh, by the way, chat. Oh, I I failed to link the thing from Hakeem. My bad. Sorry about that. Thanks for pointing it out. Everybody, you know, I don't agree with Hakeem on everything, uh, but I think he's definitely one of these. This is one of the channels that is like under underappreciated. My personal opinion is that as leftists in America, we should not try to, you know, there's a very strong anarchist strain in the American left. And the anarchist strain in history has always been anti-cooperation, anti-solidarity uh, with other uh, movements of liberation in the rest of the world. Kind of like, well, yes, you are struggling again for your independence, but you're not doing it the way I would. Therefore, you're bad. I support USA. And it's always kind of, mm, no, nah, I think I'm going to err on the side of uh, uh, solidarity with foreign struggle as opposed to doing a kind of like rad lib uh, justification for why I support the status quo. So I like Hakeem because we need more people that are um, skeptical of the American supremacy. And a lot of people go, hey, you may not like America, but it's better than China running the world, right? And they use that to justify the biggest crimes that the US commits.
It's called toxic algae because we are in drought. Concentrations of chemicals are higher. It's my job and street cred. Oh, damn. The Spanish Civil War is the best example. Don't even get me started. Warmer water equals more growth of bacteria, although the pollution of the water, water certainly does not help. We'll start happening more and more on American coasts and in our lakes. What do we disagree on? Mainly, uh, the things that I disagree with uh, Hakeem the most about is there is a lot of skepticism about the American left. Rightly so. Rightly so. The kind of this, I would call it third worldist perspective that you're not going to get any left movement from the West or from the developed world. So you should discredit and discount uh, leftists and social Democrats in, um, in the West because they're just as bad. And I think that's factually incorrect. And a perfect example of that I would give is the social Democrats in, in Sweden, for example, supported Vietnam in the American Vietnamese War and included giving military and other aid directly to Vietnam. I don't agree that if you put in leftists in positions of power in the, in the West, like if Bernie Sanders won, I think he would have redone the nuclear deal with Iran. He would have normalized relations with Venezuela. He would have not seized the money from the Afghan Central Bank and caused starvation there. He would have ended American support of the Saudi war in Yemen. I think that... Even though Bernie Sanders isn't perfect, and even though they would still support elements, like he wouldn't have disbanded NATO as an example. He still would have supported elements of American power. He would have done significantly more to rein in America's most virulent forms of uh, aggression. So, and the most, and the things that we do that are so dangerous, like interfering in Brazil, interfering in Colombia. I think Joe Biden is significantly more dangerous than Bernie Sanders in, in war. I think Bernie would have uh, had a different approach toward uh, Ukraine. Maybe the Ukraine war would have happened anyway because so many things are baked in and Putin is a right winger. But I don't think things would have gone the same direction if Bernie was in power. Who knows? And he would have been swiftly heart attack gunned. Yeah. Yeah. Are you watching the stream unsubbed? You're making income inequality worse. You are doing anti-praxis. We are the only Twitch stream that will not accept scam advertisers, and I will never fuck you over by selling you crap.